Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, mm -hmm. uh, she calls, she has called President Trump a racist. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen him say or do anything that you would describe as racist or bigoted? So uh, for the answer is un uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, you can't not be a racist for 69 years, then run for president and be a racist. And what I'll say is that when a lot of the Democrats call the president a racist, I think they're doing uh, a, a disservice to people who suffer because of real racism in this country. Was birtherism racist? Um, look, I wasn't really involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Um, look, I know who the president is, and I have not seen anything in him that is racist. So again, I was not involved in that. Did you wish he didn't do that? Uh, like I said, I was not involved in that. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and senior advisor, speaking there with Jonathan Swan of Axios in a really extraordinary interview. And Jonathan joins us now. Uh, Jonathan, good morning. Always good to see you. A little backdrop because we were just discussing Jared Kushner doesn't do a lot of interviews. How did you compel him to sit down and ask questions from a guy he had to know was going to go there on questions like birtherism and his friend MBS? Oh, just bribery, will it? <laughs> just pure bribery. Just straight bribery, cash yeah. deal. <laughs> Under the table stuff. You know? Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, you're just going with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so let, let's talk about, were you surprised? We got a lot in this interview we want to show and ask you about. Were you surprised at his inability to actually say, conceptually at least, that birtherism is racist or a bad thing and not just say, I wasn't there? No, not really, because Jared uh, Kushner defends his father-in-law at every turn. And, um, I mean, the, the question I asked was, I mean, you've heard of a, a pretty loud chorus of Democrats, um, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez probably being the latest, to, to call the president a racist. And so I asked a very open-ended question, which was, have you seen him say or do anything that you would regard as racist? And then, and he gave a very passionate defense of the president, and I just thought a logical follow-up would be to ask him about the two incidents which people bring up most prominently when they make that argument about the president. Uh, I honestly didn't know how he was going to respond, and I think they're the most interesting questions. When you ask a question and you genuinely don't know what the answer is going to be, it's sort of the opposite, opposite of a prosecutor where they know what the answer is already. I didn't know what he was going to say. And uh, so, yeah, I, I was interested and uh, I guess somewhat surprised that I, I suppose I thought maybe he would be even more forceful and might say, no, it wasn't, uh, you know, just out of um, yeah. pure loyalty. Even for a loyal son-in-law, though, Rick Tyler, to sit there with that expressionless look on his face and not be able to show any emotion or any broad condemnation for birtherism, which was plainly racist, is, remains extraordinary. Well, he said the president hadn't been racist for 66 years, and New Yorkers know very well the full-page ad that Donald Trump took out on the Central Park Five. And so that's that started it, and then uh, birtherism was clearly racist. But I want to ask um, Jonathan if you get got any insights into the Middle East peace plan that's supposed to be rolled out in June and what it might look like. Uh, it looks like the Abbas and the Palestinians are boycotting this sort of economic uh, Davos that was supposed to occur in Bahrain. Uh, and any, did you get any feeling for what is in this plan? So it's important to note that the, that the summit at the end of this month uh, is, is an economic summit. That's the economic portion of the plan. The great mystery in the region is what the political portion of the plan uh, contains, which is the division of territory. Will the Palestinians get their own state with a capital in East Jerusalem, which is obviously a central demand? To what extent will the Israeli government and military be involved uh, in, in that area? And Jared Kushner has been incredibly tight-lipped about this plan. It's probably one of the best-kept secrets in the U.S. government. And he didn't reveal anything to me. But what he did say you know, those parts of the interview were the least revealing when I tried to press him for details. The, the more revealing were the big picture questions I asked him, which were, you know, do you think the Palestinians are capable of governing themselves? He seemed very uncertain to the point of not really, at least not currently. And then he, he said that they, he, he believes they should have self-determination, which is a quite a flexible term and doesn't preclude the idea of being Israeli military or governmental supervision. So let's listen to part of that exchange with Jared Kushner on the Middle East peace plan. Here it is. 
Do you understand why the Palestinians don't trust you? Um, uh, look, I'm not here to be trusted. I'm here to... Well, you are, frankly. I mean, to look at it from their point of view, and you're a businessman, you always look at things from their view. You've got three Orthodox Jews mm -hmm. on the negotiating team. Two of you have, at different points, funded settlements, Jewish settlements in the West Bank. You've got the actions you've taken so far, moving the US Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. You've cut all aid to the Palestinians, including hospitals in East Jerusalem. And you've shut down the Palestinian diplomatic office in Washington. I mean, can you not see why they might not want to talk to you and that they might not trust you? Right, so there's a difference between the Palestinian leadership and the Palestinian people, okay? And you I, think the Palestinian people would be okay with all of those things that you guys have done? The actions we've taken were because America's aid is not an entitlement, right? If we make certain decisions which we're allowed to as a sovereign nation to respect the rights of another sovereign nation and we get criticized by that government, the response of this president is not to say, oh, let me give you more aid. So uh, again, that was as a result of decisions taken by the Palestinian leadership. With regards to the Palestinian people, uh, I do believe that they want to have a better life, and I do think that uh, they're not going to judge. Don't mind the aid being cut. Well, they're not going to judge anything based on trusting me or trusting anyone else. They're going to judge it based on uh, the facts, and then make a determination. Do they think this will allow them to have a pathway to a better life or not? Richard, what do you think of what you just heard? Uh, Jonathan did a sensational job. Yeah. Uh, this administration has essentially penalized the Palestinians from day one. Look, the Palestinians aren't perfect here. Uh, they are not a viable partner in many ways. Historically, they've blown many opportunities, but they have been cut out from the get-go of this process. The idea that an economics only or an economics first package can entice the Palestinians is simply a non-starter. A non the idea that the Saudis or anybody else can deliver the Palestinians is a second non-starter. So the premises of what Jared Kushner are doing, I would argue, are simply flawed. You're not going to have an imposed agreement. Economics is not going to uh, win, win the, uh, the day here. And then it's garbled. Self-determination, think about the phrase. Self-determination means the Palestinians get to choose their own future. That's not going to happen. There's not a Palestinian state on the, on the, on the table here. There's something ill-defined that's less. You don't have an Israeli partner either, by the way, until at least November. And depending upon the nature of the government, you won't have a partner then. So I really think this, this plan is stillborn. Uh, David Ignatius, can I just ask you, is there any reason that we should take Jared Kushner's peace plan seriously at all? Well, he's put a lot of work into it. <laughs> and he's spent a lot of time traveling, talking to people okay. about it. Uh, so that... The simple answer is that the United States has abandoned the role that Richard Haas, so many others, helped us to play, which we described as being the honest broker in this very difficult problem that's been there since 1967 about the Palestinian territories, how they should be administered, Palestinian aspirations for, for statehood. When I look at what Jared Kushner, the business guy, is trying to do, I think of this being a leveraged buyout of the Palestinian problem. The Bahrain Economic Summit, basically the idea is let's, let's hose this uh, area as much as we can with, with investment. Let's try to create jobs, a sense of economic dynamism so people will forget about some of the other harder issues. There will be an, what we call an outside-in effort to take Saudi Arabia, the UAE, other major countries and in some way embody the idea that, we, that those countries now accept Israel. I think that's going to be powerful, I, I, and nobody should minimize the importance of that. But in terms of getting to the heart of this problem, I see nothing from this administration that really engages it in the ways that we've learned mm -hmm. since 67 have to be done. Jonathan Swan, so thorough was your interview that we actually have to take a quick break. We want to talk more about it on the other side, including your questioning to Jared Kushner about his friendship with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and the infamous 2016 Trump Tower meeting. All that when we come right back on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.